The most highly requested video topic I've received since the 1.0 update for Grounded is what is the best armor. The wait is finally over. Today I'll be looking at all the new armor sets and letting you know how they rank against the older sets. So what I want to do first is start off by quickly going through the tier 1 and tier 2 armors that were already in the game and just let you know the ones I recommend using. Then we're going to move on to the tier 3s, looking at the older ones and then also the newer ones and I'll let you know what my favorite new armor is. So first off, just really quickly going through the tier 1s, the ones that I would recommend using. Eye patch is pretty useful, it gives you like 10% extra damage, although you're going to take extra damage so it's going to be useful if you're using a bow or if you're just able to like perfect block all the time. The might hat I've never actually used. Acorn armor, I do not recommend using specifically if you're playing solo because the piece, the, the bonus here, the, actually in this case, the detriment to it is the major threat. This is going to attract enemies. What this is doing is it's basically setting this up as if you're wearing this, it's going to be a tank build. So if you're used to playing like MMOs or group like RPGs where there's a tank, that's kind of what this is for. Even though it's going to give you the best defense and resistance early game, if you're playing solo, I definitely don't recommend using it. Even if you're playing in a group, I really don't recommend using it. Red Ant Armor is really just useful for going through the Red Ant Hill and if you're building because you can carry extra building pieces. The Grub Goggles or the Grub Armor in my opinion is going to be the best early game armor. The one I would probably recommend crafting because it's going to give you the stamina bonus. It's pretty decent. It's going to give you the middling defense because it's a medium armor. I wouldn't spend honestly with any of the tier 1 armor and even with weapons I wouldn't recommend using any of your upgrade resources on them. I just craft them and then just go do a couple of the labs and then once you're able to make the the tier two armors then move on to those what i want to do real quick is go to the bottom because there is a, tier, a couple tier one pieces down here that are specific like the aphid slippers aphid slippers are actually useful for the entire game because they help you move faster they will break pretty quickly because they're tier one in their light armor but if you can avoid taking damage they're useful for moving around quickly and obviously you have the fin flops and then up top we have the gill tubes and the bubble helmet obviously those are situational as well as the gas mask didn't even mention the clover armor. The clover armor apparently is tier zero. The clover armor is okay. Like right when you start, maybe you want to put that on and then go over and get yourself the grub armor because it's easy to craft. It'll also reduce your hunger and thirst. So that could be useful. But like I said, tier one, I would go grub armor if I had to pick one. Tier twos, there's no new tier twos, but the ones that are in here are going to be the ladybug armor. My first priority is to get the ladybug armor as fast as possible. Not only is it the best armor, the best tier two armor, in my opinion, it also has a super good bonus where if you level it up the sleek route, you're going to get extra healing from everything, including bandages, heal bosses, smoothies, lifesteal from weapons, basically any way you can heal eating meals, you're going to get extra healing. So I prefer going either no armor or grub and then going straight to the ladybug armor. B armor, I really don't use. If you find the rotten B armor, that's going to be better than the tier one. So you could use that. You'll find that in the right anthill. Spider armor used to be my favorite. If you watch my older videos, since they changed it to the poison build, I'm just not a fan of it anymore. Koi scale armor, if you're good at perfect blocking, can be very useful. Although the bonus for it is dazzling repose if you have the full set. That's going to give you extra damage after a perfect block. But when I tested out, the extra damage really wasn't that great. But if you're very good at perfect blocking, this might be your armor for you especially if you can perfect block almost every time and then last but not least is gonna be the black ant armor i'm not a fan of this one i know others are it's built around like a crit bill but honestly because crits um it gives you a chance of crit after blocking but crits in the game are not consistent you can only get like 25 35 percent depending on the bonuses you have on whether you've used the coup de grass and then also eating food i'm not a fan of the black ant armor if you have a scenario where you use the black ant armor maybe with specific mutations or specific weapons let me know in the comments down below and i'll definitely give it a try and if i find it you'd be useful i'll do a follow -up video on it Now, going on to the tier threes, what we're going to do is we're going to first look at the ones that were already in the game. Then I'm going to go test out the new ones. So first up is going to be the Mask of the Mother Demon. This gives poison coating. You, of course, get this from the brew mother parts. As I'm recording this right now, this is not functioning properly. I don't believe I do. I've not gotten confirmation yet. The developers are, I was told they're looking into it. So this might very well change. Right now, it's applying poison damage 100% of the time on every single hit. I believe it's only supposed to do a 10% of the time, so more likely than not, that's going to get fixed. And if that's the case, I pretty much never use the Mass of the Mother Demon. I just don't find it useful. If I want to do poison, I just there's other armors to use, and there's weapons you can use to apply poison. Antlion armor, it used to be my favorite Tier 3 armor before this new update. I like getting this. Normally, my progression is to go Ladybug armor straight into Antlion because Antlion armor is going to help you get through the help you to navigate the sandbox during the day so you don't have to worry about only going at night. It's also useful for getting the charcoal from the grill area, the barbecue spill. So I still use antline armor. And also if you have the sleek bonus, I believe the sleek bonus is the one that actually gives you the faster reload speed for bows. And of course I love using bows in the game. 
roly poly armor, heavy armor, built around block. The set bonus for this is similar to the set bonus from the acorn armor where it's gonna actually attract enemies. So this is a tank build. I never use the roly poly armor. I don't recommend using it in any situation. So like I guess I said, if there's a reason, if you find a re like if you can do it where you build a tank build around it, you have other people you're playing with, maybe, but I just don't recommend using it. The other ones that are older are gonna be, actually that's all of them. So now we're gonna take a look, actually no, there's one more piece. I don't wanna skip this one because this was in the game before. That's the termite armor. The termite armor does give you 100% resistance to dust. So if you're fighting dust mites or you're fighting termites, this can be useful. That way you won't get the, stunt, the, the status effects from the dust. It also has a 10% chance to give you a solid dust effect where you can actually, I guess it lets you escape kind of like the, the beat, what is it? The Shinobi sneeze. I think it's something along those lines. I never use the termite armor, honestly. It is better now than it used to be because it used to do like harvest speed or something like that, but I just really never use it and I would not recommend using it. So with that out of the way, let's head and take a look at the newer armors. And first up, we're going to look at, I have them in my inventory here. We're going to look at the wizard's hat. So what we're going to do is we're going to equip these and I'm going to kind of show you what the bonuses are. So you're going to go, if you go to the status, what you're going to see is by default, this thing, the wizard's hat has wizard's defense. Attacks with staves increase your perfect block window. So basically, it's going to help you perfect block similar to how the parry master or the koi armor does. If you go the sleek route, and honestly, with all armors, I always recommend going the sleek route because you're for, you're just forgoing a little bit of the defense or resistance. But at the same time, you're going to get some kind of bonus. And usually the bonuses you can find a use for them. In this case, it pairs well with the defense. So the defense gives you the perfect block window. And if you perfect block using the sleek upgrade route, you'll get damage dealt with staves for extra damage dealt with staves after the perfect block so basically if you can perfect block it's useful so with this one basically what you're going to see is it kind of pairs well with the staff but honestly i don't recommend using it because it's if i'm using a staff especially the fire staff which you'll see we'll just do a couple shots with it i don't want to do too much because sometimes it kills the frames when i'm recording if you're using the fire staff or the sour staff you're going to be at range you're not going to really want to be up close with them the min staff is actually designed to be up close I just don't really find a reason to use the wizard's hat. It does look cool. Maybe, like I said, maybe there's a reason you could use it, but I don't recommend using it, to be honest. The fluffy pupa hat, what this does is we're going to take a look at the status effects real quick. It gives you plus hauling strength, so it's going to let you carry 10 extra, 10 extra pieces of grass or grass planks or weed stems. If you're building a base, especially late game, this will be super useful because combining it with the red ant armor and workers comp, I believe you can carry a total of like 24 and actually with the intern badge, you can carry 24 grass planks or weed stems. And then you can also carry your pallet so you can get even more. The sleek upgrade is going to be lowers the time it takes. It lowers the time, lowers the amount of time you spend exhausted after using all your stamina. So basically it's kind of like the cardio fan mutation. So I guess that's kind of useful. It could be useful for if you're just constantly harvesting grass or weeds. But honestly, if you have grass, grass master on, might not be that useful. So this is, this would be more of one of those ones where it's like, the only time it'll be worth using is if you're actually just hauling a lots of resources. So now let's take a, the take a look at the first set. So what we're going to do is we're going to put on the fire ant armor here. So we'll equip that and take a look at the statuses. Then we'll show you it in, a, in, in play here. So this gives you, each piece gives you corrosion attacks, which means that you have a chance to weaken your defend enemies. enemies sorry. Each piece gives you a 10% bonus. They are multiplicative. So if you have all three on, you're actually going to have a 33% chance of weakening enemies. What that means is every third attack, you're going to have a chance of weakening the enemies. That means they're going to take more damage. I do believe it lasts for more. I, it kind of seems like it lasts like forever. Like it never ends. I don't know the exact time. Haven't been able to figure that out yet, but we'll figure that out at some point in the future, hopefully. It also is going to give you, if you go the, I think this is the, the acid damage is increase, increases damage dealt by acid. This is just the piece, but one of the piece bonuses. So basically... You can actually, if you have the full set on, you can do acid damage. Now, the acid damage, like most things, if you go the sleek route, this is only going to give you, it only procs 10% of the time. So one out of every 10 hits, you're going to get the acid damage. However, if you're having to use the full set on here, you're going to get more damage dealt by it. So it could be useful. But honestly, the reason I'm using it is for corrosion. So let me just put a weapon on here. I used to, I, I've been using it a lot with the tick sword. So I'm going to go find myself an enemy real quick. So here's a ladybird. And what I'm going to do is fight it with no armor. And I'm going to show you how long, it, how many hits it takes to kill. Now let me make sure I have no mutations on that are going to give me anything. So we just have natural explorer to help us run faster. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit this thing with nothing on. And then I'm going to put the red, the fire ant armor on to show you that it should kill it faster by about 30%. So it's going to take one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So 18 hits without the armor. Now let's go find a ladybird and put the full armor set on. So here's another ladybird. I do have the full fire and armor on. Well, I almost did. Now we do. We have the full fire and armor. Same, same weapon here. So it took 18 hits without it. Let's see how many it takes now. One, two, three, 
4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So we killed it in three less hits, which would be what? 15 versus 18. So that's about what? About 18% faster. So maybe it's not exactly 33% every time. When I tried it against the Black Ox Beetle, I used it with, with and without the armor, and I used a Pebblet Axe, or yeah, the Pebblet Axe, so it would take for, basically took forever to kill it. it. took like 62 hits or 63 hits with the without the armor and like 42, 41, 42 with it. So it's somewhere going to be about like 20 to 30% faster in terms of killing enemies. And like I said, it seems to last quite a long time, I, and it, it just... I guess it gets reapplied. So if you're using a fast attacking weapon like the new Tick Sword, it'll be super useful. So now let's take a look at our next armor set. So next up, we're going to take a look at the new Assassin's Armor. This set is made from the Mantis parts, which is one of the new bosses. And we're just going to take a real quick look at the statuses. First up is going to be the Peace Bonus. Your critical hits cause enemies to bleed. That's going to do a slight tick damage over time. We're going to show it off in just a second. The Sleek Bonus is critical stun hits apply additional stun damage. And then the critical chain is going to be the Fury of the Mantis runs through you, increase crit chance after dealing a crit. So for this build, we're going to put on Coup de Grass just to kind of hopefully show it off. That's going to give us a 25% crit chance. I think there's a Black Ox Beetle down here, so we can show this off. I'm going to be honest, the bleed, kind of like most of the damage over time effects in this game, I find them underwhelming. Hopefully this guy has some health. So I was messing around. So he's got full health. So one thing I did learn is that the bugs aren't aggroing you. The bleed doesn't actually work for some reason, so I had to make sure I turned bug aggro on. So we're just going to hit this guy a couple times and see if we can get the bleed effect. Now it is dependent upon getting, there it is, it's, go, it's ticking a little bit right now. Or at least it looked like it did. So this thing's dependent heavily on crit. So it's ticking slowly. Does it only bleed? There it goes. So as you can see, it does about the same amount of damage as I think poison. But I'm going to be completely honest with you. Having used this armor and tried it out, and then specifically with this weapon, I was kind of underwhelmed by the Mantis armor and the Mantis set in general. They look cool, but I really don't like them that much. So let's move on to the next armor and take a look at that. Next set's going to be the new Black Ox armor. Now, I thought when this thing was shown off in the trailer, it was going to let us be like warm us up or something in a cold biome. Of course, we did not get a cold biome, as you know. We're going to take a look at the statuses here. First up's going to be overbearing. Charge attacks have a chance to lower enemy damage dealt. So what that means is if you're attacking with a weapon, which I can show real quick, we can just use any weapon. You can just swing the weapon normally, or you can hold attack down for a little bit longer and do a heavier attack. This also works with the staff. So if on the staff, I can just do a quick shot, or I can hold the staff down and charge it up, and you can see it's going to do more damage. So the charge attacks do a lot more damage. But in this case, what this is going to be doing here is it's going to have a chance to lower enemy any lower enemy damage dealt. That basically means to me, like to this, to me, this is like completely useless because you shouldn't be wanting to lower enemy damage. You should want to be blocking enemy damage by either perfect blocking or blocking at all. So I guess that if you're not good at blocking, that could be useful. Next up is going to be the quick charge. Charge attacks charge faster. This, I believe, is the sleek upgrade bonus. Yeah, it is. So basically what this is, is the charge attacks are going to be, it's 12% per piece and multiplicatively it makes it 40% faster. So we can show this off right here real quick. I will show you the staff here. So with, with it on, you'll see like how quickly it does. And I actually timed it. So that's how long it takes with the armor on, and we'll take the armor off real quick just to show you how long it takes without it. And you're going to see that was much longer for that thing to charge up. So that is definitely noticeable. So honestly, the situation where I thought this would be useful would be using it with the, sta the staves because the staves charge up. Honestly, I'd never use the heavy attack with regular weapons unless I sneak up on something and try to get one attack in. And then last is going to be the, this is the, uh, I think this is the set bonus, or your charge attacks with melee weapons pack a weightier punch dealing more stun. So now this, this again, this is kind of like, it completely defeats the purpose of using a staff because the staff's a ranged weapon. So it's kind of like the best use for it is using with a staff to charge faster. But at the same time, if you use a staff, you can't take advantage of the melee thing here. And honestly, the first thing here is just not that useful. And I'm going to be completely honest with you. I would, I don't really recommend using this armor. Maybe if you're using a staff, it would be useful. I could see it being for that, for charging it up faster. That's about the only case would be doing that. Like Black Ox armor of the new armors is one of the ones I would least recommend using. Let's move on. Let's take a look at the next one. So next up is going to be one of the cooler looking ones. That's going to be the Widow armor. So of course, this is dropped by or made with black widow parts so let's take a look at the statuses here 
First up is going to be poison damage. You're going to notice this shows up three times here because if you have each piece on, it's going to give you extra poison damage. Poison, unlike bleed from my testing, actually stacks. So that I found that interesting was that the bleed damage, even when I, tr I tried to get it to stack on top of each other, it didn't seem to. But the poison damage definitely stacks. You can see it ticking down much faster. So the poison, in my opinion, is a much better build than the bleed build. Next up is going to be the parry poison here, and I believe this is the sleek, but yeah, this is the sleek bonus. So basically, perfect blocks have a chance to apply poison to the attacker. What that means is if you perfect block, you have another chance to apply poison. So if you hit something and get the poison on it, you're going to apply it three times. If you perfect block again, I think this triples it, so you can maybe get six stacks of poison. That'd be pretty nuts, although poison is kind of underwhelming. And then last but not least here is this is going to be the, the, the set bonus. Death's impetus, killing things provides you with a boost of energy, briefly increasing movement speed. So basically, after you kill something, you'll move faster. So I want to go find a beefy enemy, and we're gonna. I'm gonna try to find either a Roly Poly or a Black Ox Beetle, so I can show off the poison build here. I will say that there was a poison build recommended using the Mask of the Mother Demon. I do not recommend using that because honestly, one thing that was broken before the update that happened the day or two before I'm recording this was spiders even the broodmother was taking poison damage that's been fixed because it was not intended whack black widows never took poison damage and i tested that but it's all been fixed so no spiders take poison damage anymore so the poison build's not going to give you that extra damage against any type of spiders and also the mask of the mother demon like i mentioned earlier i'm pretty sure is bugged out and i think it's going to be fixed so if you're going to use the widow armor at all i would or a poison build at all i'd recommend going the full widow armor so let me go find a beefy enemy so i can show you how fast the uh, poison stacks up and how much damage it does Right, so here we have a black ox beetle. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to just hit it with the tick sword because that does not apply poison by itself. And you'll see what happens here. I hit it. It's not taking any poison damage. So one of the problems with this build is you have to have a weapon that applies poison, which is why people were using the Mass of the Mother Demon. But if the Mass of the Mother Demon was functioned as, as it was supposed to, it only have a 10% chance to apply it. So I think what's really the best situation is going to be either use the Spider Fang Dagger. The Larva Blade, I think, does poison as well if i remember correctly i can't remember i know the spider fang dagger does and of course the black widow dagger the widow dagger so we're gonna hit this thing with this and watch you'll see the poison will start ticking down and there it goes one tick two ticks so it's not very much but basically the build this thing as you can see that if you're hitting it really quickly it's going to start doing damage and it's just ticking so it almost looks like i don't even know if it's stacking or not it's going down let's see about Maybe like a quarter of a bar. So what I want to do is I want to take the armor off and only have one piece on and see if it does the same amount of poison damage after this thing stops ticking because it does have a duration. So it looks like it stops. So I'm going to hit it one time, apply the poison and see if it ticks for less. So is it doing it less? It's definitely doing it less. So you're definitely getting triple it with it. So if you're going to go the poison build, it seems like the best route is to use the Widow Dagger, which is going to be the better dagger or the Spider Fine Dagger. I'll check real quick just to see if the... I cannot remember if the, I, be, I believe the, the Larva Blade does poison. Yeah, it does do poison damage, but you can see it does far less damage. And then the Spider Fang Dagger only does one damage, whereas the Widow Dagger by default does two, so it does double. So if you're going to do a poison build, I'd recommend doing this. To be completely honest, is it melting this thing? I mean, it's taking its health down really quickly, but at the same time, you can kind of melt most of the enemies with the other tier three weapons so i'm not gonna I'm, i still want to do more testing on the, of the poison build right now it's not my this is not my favorite armor but it does rank up above the new armors it's definitely better than some of the ones we looked at before but we do have one more to take a look at so let's take a look at that before we conclude with me letting you know which armor i like best right now the final armor we're going to be taking a look at today is going to be the moth armor so this is a new set it looks pretty cool honestly it looks like you're like a mummy or like ancient egyptian or like just from like ancient times it looks really cool Let's take a look at the statuses real quick before we show them in action. So the piece bonus is going to be range cut. Gives your bows and staff attacks a chance to apply an additional bleed damage. The word here that I don't understand is the additional. The only thing I know that applies bleed damage in the game is feather errors. I mean, maybe they added something else. I'm not aware of it. But so basically, you have to use it with feather errors because I don't believe any of the staves use do bleed damage. I could be wrong, but I don't believe they do. The sleek bonus is going to be jumpstart. Attacks with bows and staves have a chance to instantly restore stamina. Then last but not least, it's going to be the set bonus, wind, wind run. Tap into the gusts and currents of the wind, occasionally increasing movement speed when landing range attacks. So what we're going to do is we're going to use, I'm going to use a sprig bow just to show you the difference here. So what I noticed was, I'm not sure if I mentioned this before, was the scaling for bleed and then the poison as well. It doesn't matter. There's basically, they do a certain amount of damage. It's not like they do more if there's a better weapon. So I want to kind of show off the bleed damage, if I can get it here. So let's see what the probability of it happening is. 
we're actually going to get it. That's two shots. That's three. It's about a 33% chance for it to proc. Do I have to get a melee weapon out for you to see it? Doesn't seem to really be really doing much there. Let me keep shooting it off. Just kind of, I want, we want to see the bleed damage if possible. So there it goes. You can see it's ticking down a little bit. So that's how much it's ticking down with the, with the sprig bow. Now we're going to use a, we're going to use the, uh, black ox bow and we're going to let it reset itself. So it should stop after a certain amount. Of, so now it's reset. So now let's see if we can get it with this. You see the black ox bow does way more damage and hopefully we can get the bleed going. Because I would like, I want you to see that basically it's going to do the exact same amount. I guess we got to, let's get the sprig bow to see if it's doing. Is it doing it right now? It's very hard to see, unfortunately. Let me try to get, so we're going to get this. We just want to see the bleed damage. The bleed damage, if it doesn't show up, I guess you can just take my word for it because I've done extensive testing on it. It doesn't seem to stack, number one, which the poison does. And number two, the better the weapon, like using the Black Ox Bell, doesn't seem to have any impact on how much bleed damage it does. It just does the same tick as the regular, and it just doesn't even seem to be proccing that fast, especially with this bow. So it is, you can use it with the, let's see if we can get it to proc with a staff, maybe. I don't know. Can we get the bleed? There's the bleed. So that's interesting when it said additional. Maybe it just does it. So you can see the tick. It seems to be doing the same amount of tick. Maybe it's doing it, maybe it's doing triple. I don't know. Maybe it's better than the Mantis Armor. But I don't know. I just don't. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't like bleed builds in the game. I don't like the bleed. I don't like any of the damage over time effects, honestly. Even the gas air, super gas air, and stuff like that. They just don't really seem to do a lot of damage. So what I want to do really quickly is just go through the armors. And like I said, if we look at the tier ones, my recommendation would be to go from grub armor to ladybug armor. Then once you, when you have the opportunity, move on to the antline armor. And then for the new armors, the way I would rank them would be looking at the ones I've shown off here. I don't really, I would, I'm not going to really recommend using the wizard's hat. I don't see it to be the useful, the fluffy pupa hat, good for building, but these other five sets here, the way that I would rank them, number one, my favorite new set. And if you've been watching my live streams, you probably already guessed this. I like the, I love the fire ant set that corrosion, the 33% corrosion chance, which lowers the enemy defenses paired with a fast attacking weapon, like the tick sword. I have also just crafted in my survival world, the, the toenail scimitar or scimitar, however you pronounce it. That's a really fast attack weapon. I'm going to try that out probably during my live stream tonight as you're, uh, the night this video is going live. And I'm going to try that out to see if it works well. The corrosion, because it's like applied and then you're doing, it's doing a lot of damage really quickly, you can really quickly take down beefy enemies. So I really like the corrosion damage. The other things for it, the acid damage, that's really kind of minimal. I wish it was something different. If, honestly, if it was something different, like if there was a weapon in the game that applied acid damage, like if they added like, Maybe the tick sword, maybe they add a, maybe the fire ant club or something could apply the corrosion. Or if they just added another weapon that added the acid damage or something like that, that could pair up with the corrosion. That'd be great. Right now, you only have about a 10% chance of getting the acid to apply. And then there's like a slight buff on top of it. So it's really nice. Not that much of a uh, big deal. The corrosion is what it's all about. After that, I would say I the widow armor, it does the poison damage can stack. So it's useful for that. But it's not even like I just. I feel like the red ant, the fire ant armor is far superior. I'd rank the widow armor second. The moth armor and the mantis armor would come in like three, four. The bleed effect on the moth armor seems to me much better than the one on the the mantis armor for whatever reason. So I'd probably rank the ma the moth three, the mantis four, and then the black ox armor really only seem useful for making the staves shoot faster. I really wouldn't recommend using that at all. So my favorite new armor is going to be the fire ant armor. Let me know what yours is in the comments down below. If you found this video helpful, make sure to hit the like button. And here's another video you might find useful as well.